He's been away for a while. He's moved over a thousand miles from home. Now, in the sunny state of Florida, a man rises from the shadows to bring you a higher class of movie reviews. His name is Andrew Cavanaugh, and this is Cavanaugh's Corner. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Cavanaugh's Corner. I wanted to say thank you um, for hanging in there with me. Uh, last week we had some technical difficulties, so we're not able to film an episode. We had some camera problems, uh, but as you can see, we're uh, back in action today. And uh, funny enough, we're going to be doing something a little bit different this week. Um, as you can tell, um, in a little bit of a different outfit. Um, I like to keep it classy, but we're kind of overdoing it this week. Um, and there's a reason why uh, we're overdoing it this week. Um, as you can see, we also have a nice little setup here. Um, but basically this week, we, uh, I have something I wanted to talk about because it did not get a lot of attention. Um, and funny enough, normally I'd like to talk about a new release movie, um, but uh, there was really nothing of uh, precedence that I wanted to talk about that came out within the last uh, week or so. Um, the film Gods of Egypt came out, and uh, um, I'm not even going to talk about it. I, I, I don't even want to talk about it. Um, I, I, yeah, it was one of those movies. So anyway, um, we're going to skip over that horrible waste of time, and uh, we're going to go right into uh, something that is near and dear to my heart, and I think it would be uh, to yours too. Um, and that is a release, uh, actually a re-release of an album, um, a music album in this case. Um, you're like, why are you talking about music on a movie review show? Well, um, it, it's actually a, a new version of, uh, this is it right here actually, it's Michael Jackson's uh, first solo album called Off the Wall. And they re-released this in a uh, pretty nice little set here. I kind of want to show you, actually this part comes off. And uh, this is the album right here, and it actually slides out. I'm not going to do an unboxing video, but I do want to show you this because it is a really awesome uh, kind of album uh, that they did here. This inside, um, there's actually a piece of chalk. I'm not going to do it here, but there's a piece of chalk in the top part of this. You can take it out and actually draw your own design and message in here. It's really awesome. Um, and the thing that's nice about this re-release is that they totally remastered the album. The album actually sounds better than ever. Um, I've always loved this album. You can actually see they actually did the CD as if it was the um, uh, the original record actually looked like this, so that's really great. And they also did um, this, which is the main thing I'm going to be talking about today, is they included a new documentary called Michael Jackson's Journey from Motown to Off the Wall, uh, and it is uh, a documentary uh, by Spike Lee. And uh, funny enough, Spike Lee did another documentary called Bad 25 uh, a few years ago with the 25th anniversary of the, uh, the Bad album by Michael Jackson, which is another one of my favorite albums. Um, but it was weird because that, that special edition didn't come with the documentary. You had to buy it separately. And the only place you could really get it from was directly from Michael Jackson's website. And you had to pay like $30, $40 for just the the movie and nothing else. It was really ridiculous. Um, this here was about 20 bucks. And you get the album, the special edition artwork, um, you get the uh, booklet here, and you get the movie on, uh, this is the Blu-ray version, um, or you could get the DVD. I think the DVD is like 15 bucks or something, so it's, it's really affordable, um, unlike the, uh, the bad version, the bad uh, special edition, which was very expensive. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it was around 40, 50 bucks for one of the higher uh, limited editions. And this was great. This was a really nice little set. And I wanted to kind of devote the whole episode to this because this was an album that I loved when I was a kid. I have the, the vinyl version of this album. I have it on, uh, on it, the LP. And uh, I always have been a fan of, of Michael Jackson all my life. And he has been a, uh, a big influence on uh, my life. And uh, since his passing, his influence has even become higher than I'd say it was before. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful set, and I kind of wanted to take today's episode and just talk about this album. Um, uh, first of all, the album itself on here has never sounded better. Um, 
funny enough, it does not include any of the uh, little outtakes or anything um, that the last release of this album, which was like over, I think like over 10 years ago, I think was the last time they re-released this album. Um, and they didn't include any of the outtakes or anything, which is kind of disappointing. Um, but you don't really need it um, with an album this good. Uh, the remastered version here, uh, you pick up on instruments and little, little touches that you never heard before, which is great. Um, in the end, it's a great album that sounds even better. I'm not even going to waste my time on that. Uh, if you haven't heard this album, um, you need to go get it. You need to buy this like right away. Um, uh, the packaging here is very minimal, but it carries over the original cover. Um, funny enough, uh, when Michael was still alive, this was re-released. And uh, the weird thing was they changed the cover. For many, many years, you couldn't get this cover. Um, all they had was his feet. Um, I think the reason why that was done was because either Michael himself was a little, um, it's hard to say, but he was a little maybe insulted by the original cover since he went through a lot of physical changes after this album came out. Um, not just with his skin color, but also um, just with his physical appearance, his hair, everything changed uh, almost directly after this album came out. And uh, I don't know, I, I've always loved this. I love the fact he's in the tuxedo and he's really excited. Um, I've always loved the look of this cover, but uh, for many years you couldn't get it. And now they uh, finally brought it back. Um, and I'm glad to see it back. Um, as you can see, I have my little cue cards here. So yes, I am cheating. I don't care. I like having cards. I feel like I'm on a little talk show here with my little microphone and everything. This is going to be the new look of the show, by the way. Um, we're going to keep this from here on out. Probably going to get a little fancier uh, desk soon, but for now, this does the job. Um, I do have to say, uh, the n number one thing I wanted to talk about with this is the, uh, the Blu-ray. Um, the documentary by Spike Lee is probably one of the most uh, informative documentaries uh, about Michael Jackson I have ever seen. Um, and I've seen a few of them. A lot of them are third party, um, and they tend to talk about uh, Michael's personal issues later in life rather than the music. And um, I would say that Michael Jackson uh, is someone that I think has been idolized and also demonized through the years. And I think that uh, when you come, when it comes down to it, when I want to talk about Michael Jackson, I want to talk about the musician, the artist, uh, and the master class entertainer that he was. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm not going to talk about anything uh, about uh, allegations that were made to him through the years that were never proven. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. Um, what I am going to talk about, though, is the fact that this Blu-ray... Uh, focuses on a part of his career that a lot of other documentaries kind of gloss over. Um, there's a documentary that came out, I want to say, in the mid to late 80s. Um, I want to say more towards 87, 88, around that time, called Michael Jackson, The Legend Continues. And that is one of the few doc. You have to excuse my nose, by the way. I'm, I'm very congested today. Um, you have to say there's probably about three or four documentaries ever made um, that were actually official uh, about Michael's life. Um, that was one of them, uh, and it was actually narrated. It was I think it was narrated by uh, James Earl Jones. Uh, I'll mark it and I'll put an annotation in here if I'm if I'm incorrect. But I think it was James Earl Jones, and it was a very very informative documentary starting from when he was a kid all the way up until the release of, of Bad. And um, funny enough, even that documentary glosses over the time period, the time period that uh, this talks about. And the time period is Michael, as a young child, uh, into Michael going into puberty and starting uh, moving away from Motown to CBS Records and then uh, turning into a solo artist with the release of this album. And uh, I love the fact that uh, they talk about the problems that occurred when they left 
uh, Motown going to CBS Records, but I do have to say the one thing I love about this documentary more than anything else is the fact that they interview a ton of people. Um, most of Michael's brothers are interviewed, almost all of them are, and they're all current interviews except for I think one, but I think most of them are actually um, live and did an interview uh, including Michael's uh, father and mother. Um, not a lot of Michael's dad in there, I think we know why, uh, but uh, Michael's mom uh, is prominent. Catherine is very prominent in there. Uh, Spike Lee himself is very prominent in the uh, in the, the documentary, um, which is nice because uh, he's an entertaining guy. Um, I like listening to him uh, talk about not only making things but also just interviews with him. He's a, he's a very funny, entertaining director, and I think he has a great uh, gift of gab. I think he's he's a, he's awesome uh, in interviews, um, and in this he's no different because he's very excited about the subject. Uh, he's very excited about talking about Michael Jackson. He almost has like a, a borderline obsession with Michael, which I love. Um, that's what you want when you have somebody that's doing a documentary about you. Um, the only thing I, I wasn't crazy about with this documentary was the fact that uh, it, it, they don't go into detail. Once they get to Off the Wall, once they get to the timeline of where he's doing Off the Wall, they go through track through track. Uh, they go track to track talking about each song and some of the interview some of the interviewees talk about what the song meant to them and uh, they go into somewhat little details about each song but uh, Quincy Jones is also interviewed in this uh, who is the masterful producer that Michael worked with um, as if you didn't know who he was uh, he worked with him through uh, you know uh, I would say off the wall thriller and bad um, and then after that they kind of parted ways which is too bad but um, I think one of the best things about the documentary is that Quincy's in there. The problem is, he's not used to his full potential. And I think they could have gone through and had them talk about how they made each song. It would have made the documentary much longer. Uh, but I would have loved to hear a little behind the scenes work. Because you do get some of that. Um, especially when they talk about She's Out of My Life. Uh, where they talk about Michael crying at the end of like every take. Um, and they left it in. They left it right into the album. And I think that was uh, one of those things that hit me really hard because I, for many years, I, I thought he was acting. Um, and he would cry on stage and stuff doing that song, too. And some of it was obviously acting, uh, but uh, in this documentary, The Reveal, he was really crying his eyes out at the end of every take. The song was very, very personal to him, and he would get very, very emotional and break out crying. So that's how much he was into that song. There were a few interviews um, that were in the documentary that I was not really fond of. Um, one of which, um, I'm glad I took this down as a note there because it was totally forgettable in the documentary, but one of the, one of the people that they interviewed, um, that Spike Lee interviewed, I should say, one of the people that Spike Lee interviewed um, was Kobe Bryant, uh, the basketball player. And I gotta be honest with you, um, he kind of had no place in this documentary. Um, I mean, like, no place at all, except for the fact that he could say that he met Michael Jackson at one point. Um, I'm sure that, you know, he's a, fa he's a fan just like Spike Lee is, and, uh, you know, that's great, that's fine and dandy, but, I mean, the man has absolutely no other connection to Michael Jackson except for the fact that he said that, A, he's a fan, and B... Uh, he met Michael at some point. And that, to me, um, doesn't really make him relevant to the movie. Um, I don't know. It just, to me, he didn't seem like he belonged. Um, a lot of the other people, some people actually in the documentary interview uh, were like music, music uh, critics and uh, music editors and stuff like that. And those people I can understand because they, they talk about music for a living. Um, but Kobe Bryant, I just didn't get. Um, that was one that I just, I, he could have been cut right out of the movie, and uh, we would have been fine. Uh, I don't think it would have been missing anything. Um, but again, he has a nice little insight into being a solo uh, artist, um, but he himself is not a solo artist. Although, uh, if you know anything about uh, Kobe Bryant's uh, basketball playing skills, uh, you'll know that he has always thought of himself as a solo artist. Um, anyway, uh, something else I wanted to talk about is, uh, as this person drives by blasting some kind of crappy rap music, um, 
them drive by because take your time pal it's okay um, anyway um, the other thing I wanted to talk about with this documentary that I thought was great was that um, they also included a lot of rare footage um, and what do I mean by rare footage I mean uh, there's some concert clips and stuff in this uh, blu-ray documentary that I have never seen before and I like to call myself a Michael Jackson like like connoisseur of like live performances and things like that like I have a great bootleg of a sh don't tell anybody I have a great bootleg of uh, the uh, Jacksons performing um, at the I think it was in Houston um, it was the victory tour in I think 84 83 84 and it is uh, Michael's last tour with his brothers right after the release of Thriller. And let me tell you, that is a concert. That is a great concert. There are, a, there's like one or two little clips of that, but the Triumph Tour is actually featured um, a lot in this. And that's something that was never really released except for like a concert, like the Jackson's Live album. Um, other than that, nothing has ever been released from that time period. And I love seeing uh, kind of like young Michael kind of just going solo but still performing with his brothers uh, whereas the Victory Tour um, he is definitely a solo artist and everybody else is just along for the ride that one there he's still kind of relying on his brothers but a um, lot of nice little clips from that concert especially him doing uh, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough uh, for the first time I think live actually is in this is in this Blu-ray that's great also some other music video clips of like Can You Feel It and uh, even uh, one of my favorite performances of theirs, they did um, uh, Shake Your Body Down to the Ground. Uh, Shake Your Body is uh, probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, song to dance to ever made. Um, there's a great clip of them performing it on American Bandstand. And uh, I think Dick Clark actually introduces them and in everything. They have the whole clip on here. Uh, funny enough, the only time when I've actually seen that in any other uh, documentary of theirs was that uh, Michael Jackson, The Legend Continues one. Um, and that was just a, uh, that was a great documentary as well, but, uh, this one here is a little more informative in terms of that, that, uh, that very particular time period where he was going from being with the Jacksons, going to the Jackson 5 kind of group, and then, uh, being a solo artist, so great little thing. Um, I highly recommend this. Uh, I say please go buy it. Um, if you haven't bought it already, if you're a Michael Jackson fan, or if you're just a fan of damn good music, um, this is one of the greatest albums ever made, if not one of the greatest uh, soul albums ever made by an artist. Um, definitely, in my opinion, and I know I'm going to get some hate for this, but in terms of first albums as a solo artist, this is the greatest first album ever made by a solo artist. Um, there is just so, so many good songs. I mean, you can listen to this whole album from beginning to end, um, not skip a thing. Uh, you, you can just, you can just go the whole album. Um, uh, it's just, it's so great. Um, great, a lot of great dance songs. And also just, you know, just a good album. I mean, it's just a good CD. Um, you can't ask for more than that. Um, so anyway, that was, uh, this episode of Cavanaugh's Corner. Thank you for tuning in again. And uh, we'll see you soon. All right, we'll see you next week. All right, let's see if I can do this. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Woo, almost got you, almost got you. Have a good night.